What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Recently I got a request on our Instagram page to do a quick overview of our Chaos Add-on Destruction Tools for Blender that wasn't 20 minutes long. So this video is an attempt to go through most of the basic functions within Chaos Destruction Tools and just give an overview of that add-on in under five minutes or so. If you don't know what Chaos Destruction Tools are, it's pretty much a panel within the Chaos Add-on for Blender where you can easily utilize self-fracture, create rigid bodies from your objects, add and organize constraints for your fractured rigid bodies simulations and then finally add small scale debris fields to your simulation to get a more realistic result but anyways guys this is my attempt of going through some of the basic functions of the add-on in under five minutes so let's get started i'm going to go ahead and delete our default cube here and just add a uv sphere and i'm just going to shatter this and constrain it and add some small scale debris particles really quickly so i'll go to our chaos destruction tools panel here you know we have a lot of functions in chaos destruction tools is just the newest one so we have our explosion systems which work with man to flow and everything but um, on the bottom tab here we have our destruction tools and one of the cool things we can do here is use the cutter tool here to kind of cut out which part of the sphere we want to shatter so I'll go ahead and press shift D duplicate this cube and I'll just kind of overlap these two objects where I want to shatter this secondary one here so I'll select this uh, first object which I want to cut out of the second object and then I'll select the second object here and then I'll click on cut two objects and now as you can see here we have two different pieces of of the sphere here and we can fracture one and uh, keep the other as a passive rigid body to interact with and as you can see here on the right panel here we have our chaos original objects so pretty much whenever you fracture or use the cutter tool or any of the other functions within chaos that will change an object here um, it's going to automatically add the old object to this uh, chaos original object collection so that you can go back to that at any time if you uh, get any glitches or something but anyways what I want to do here is I want to make this bottom half of our sphere a passive rigid body so I'll scroll down here to add passive rigid bodies, open it up here, and I'm going to add it as a complex rigid body. Uh, simple works for like cubes and stuff because it's a convex hole option, but complex is uh, better for more complex geometry. And now what I want to do is I want to shatter this top portion of our sphere. I like to use the annotation tool for cell fracture to uh, choose how I want to fracture this object more specifically. So I'll just click on draw fracture place and I'll start drawing on our top part of our sphere here. And the more you draw on a certain area the more it's going to fracture in that area at this point just have fun with it start drawing all over the place and you should get some cool results for the sake of this tutorial we'll try this now I'll go back to the selection box tool so I don't have my annotation tool selected anymore and I'll scroll down here to fracture settings and we can either fracture from the drawing like we've drawn here or we can fracture from the vertices of the object I'm going to use the from drawing option and you can choose your source limit or how many objects you want to fracture this object into and you can also increase this recursion value if you want those particles to be fractured again after they're fractured the first time. I'm going to leave this at 100 and maybe the recursion at zero for now, but you can increase this for more smaller particles as well. So go ahead and click on from drawing to make sure that that object that you wanted to fracture was selected. And now as you can see here, we have our fractured object and it's also in its own collection here called chaos-001. And the object that we fractured originally is now in our chaos original object collection. So as you can see here, if we want to ever select this chaos-001 collection, we can just select it here. But uh, let's say before before we make this fractured collection a rigid body, we want to fracture a certain piece or certain pieces more um, so that there's a little bit more detail in certain areas. So I'll go ahead and click on this one right here. And what I can do is I can draw another fracture place on it. And then I can fracture this one from the drawing as well. And now as you can see here, this object was fractured as well. And it's going to add the collection chaos-002, which is the next logical collection here within whatever collection that was selected originally. And then of course the pre-fractured object will be in the chaos original object collection here. All right, so anyways, now let's turn this into a rigid body simulation. So what we can do here is whenever we want to select some of our fractured collections, we can use this drop down menu here. So since chaos-002, 002 is within chaos-001 we can select them all with this one uh, drop down menu or we can just select this one by itself if you want to adjust that by itself but uh, for the sake of this tutorial i'm just going to do chaos-001 and i'll go here to active rigid bodies and add them as an active rigid body and now as you can see here if i play through our scene we already have a rigid body simulation it's uh, not amazing but it looks pretty cool for the sake of a pretty quick setup 
And uh, yeah, so that's our rigid body simulation. Of course, if you want to deactivate it, you can select the collection here and deactivate all of the rigid bodies in that collection. So now nothing happens until we have another active rigid body hit it. So uh, I showed you how to do that in the last tutorial. I'll go ahead and do that here as well, just so you know how to do it. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a icosphere, add this over here. I'm going to press I, add a location rotation scale keyframe on frame one, and then on frame maybe 50, I'll keyframe it through our object here, press I again, add another location, rotation and scale keyframe. And then I will make this a active animated rigid body. So go ahead and select that. Now, as you can see here, if we play through our scene, as soon as our icosphere hits our sphere, it's going to become an active rigid body in our scene and start crashing to the ground there. Okay, so great. Now let's add some constraints to our fractured object here. So we'll go ahead and select our chaos-001 collection and I'll scroll down here to the constraint tab. And this is uh, where you can have a lot of fun in my opinion. So let's say we want to constrain some of these objects together as the sphere hits them so they don't break apart quite as much. So I can just select a few of these here um, like so. And then I can click on create and that'll create a constraint for us so that whenever the object is hit, you can see that these objects are staying together much nicer. That can create a little more realism so that there's some smaller pieces in addition to some larger chunks that are sticking together. So that's one way to do that. You can also make these constraints breakable if you want them to break when a certain amount of force is applied to them. So I'll go ahead and click on breakable there and you can change the threshold for the breakable. So the higher this is, the less likely they are to break apart when given a certain amount of force. I go over that in more in depth in the last video and I'll make more videos as well. But uh, anyways, let's say we want to add some more constraints. Maybe we want to take some of these side constraints and attach them to our passive rigid body. So we can select all those, create a new constraint. And now, as you can see here, these objects will be constrained to this one. And as I mentioned before, you can have your different constraints in your drop down menu here. So if we want to adjust the first constraint we added, we can select that one here, or we can select the second one here. And whatever you change in this area will be applied to the constraint within the drop down menu. So there are obviously a lot of different options you can play around with the constraint and rigid body systems here. But the last thing I'm going to cover in this quick overview is adding some small scale debris particles to get a more realistic result. So what we want to do is we want to find the frame where the icosphere hits our rigid bodies like this. And then I just want to select some of these objects that we want to emit the small scale debris from. Then I'll scroll up here to our original tab here and we want to choose the debris that we want added to our rigid bodies. I'm going to just maybe use uh, concrete for the sake of this tutorial. And then we're going to click on add debris on frame 26. Go ahead and click add debris. And now as you can see here, if we play through our scene, secondary debris will be emitted from those main rigid bodies, which in my opinion is what gives you a really realistic result. And uh, yeah, there we have it. Essentially, if you want to adjust those uh, secondary debris particles, you just have to select one of the objects that has the debris field particle system on it. So this one has that secondary particle system on it and you can adjust the number of particles, the velocity of the particles, you know, the render size. So if you wanna make your secondary particles larger, for example, you can definitely do that. But anyways, guys, to bake out your simulation, you just go to cache and then bake all dynamics. And then you won't have to play from the beginning every time and you'll be able to render out your simulation. But uh, yeah, obviously we're trying to keep this add on as updated as we can. And if you have any ideas on how you would like to make it better, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. And as usual, all of the updates for all of our add ons on Blender Market are free. Just like with City Builder 3D, for example, all those kits are free once you buy the main version. But anyways, that is it for this video. I hope it was a nice quick overview and I will see you in the next one.